Hey guys, welcome in. For this video, I am going to be kind of going through the trying things out process with you. For some reason, I just thought that would be a fun way to approach this video. And we're talking about some of the best-selling makeup products on Amazon that I have never heard of. Like, when I was scanning through the list, sure, there were a few things here and there that I was familiar with, but there was a lot of stuff right at the top of the list, some of them with thousands of positive reviews that I had simply never heard of before. So I thought it might be kind of fun to just discover these together. None of it's coverage products. Those tend to be the things with the biggest like learning curve for me or trying to figure out if they actually work with my skin and whatnot. These are some lip and eye things and I just thought it would be fun to test them out with you. So what I already have on my skin, today I'm wearing my Huda Beauty foundation, concealer, and powder. Um, I've got my brows done and then I've got my Jessie James Decker face palette on today. This thing is huge. You've got these four full-size pans of product so I'm wearing that for bronzer, blush, and highlight. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of prep my lips, and I got this three-pack from Broadway. It's the Vita Lip Lip Oil Sets, and they're kind of like, I was playing with one of these last night, and you know how sometimes you get something that says lip oil, but it's not like pure oil? It's more of like a lip gloss or a lip balm that's been infused with said oil. So like last night I was wearing the um, coconut oil, and it says hydrates lips. There's a mint oil that claims a cooling effect and a rosehip oil to reduce fine lines on lips. Now Broadway is a brand I've heard of before because I'll sometimes find them at Dollar General, right? But I've never seen anything like this here and the whole set was only $4.25, just double checking that. And it's got 248 reviews and four and a half stars. That coconut oil definitely had a light coconut scent. It wasn't anything that really smelled too artificial or crazy. We're going to try out some of this um, rosehip here. Anybody who likes a rosy infused scent in any of their products I think would enjoy this if you like a Smith's Rosebud Salve. It's smooth, but it's thick. It definitely has this thickness to it and some shine as well. I guess they do call them lip glosses. Just wiping it off real quick. Texture-wise, that was a lot like the um, coconut one that I used. It's just a scent difference. Now let's try the mint. This is supposed to be a cooling effect and refreshing. And this is, again, the squeeze tube design. Exact same texture as the others. Sort of a sweet mint scent, but not overwhelming, and I'm not sure how long this is going to have to sit on my lips before I feel a cooling effect, because I'm not feeling any of that yet. But they just came, all three, together in this little pouch, and I'm not sure how many of you are a clear gloss type person, or if you just like the idea of the oil-infused products here, but they do have a truly moisturizing feel, even though there's some shine there. So we'll let that kind of work on the lips. Maybe I'm starting to feel a little cooling now. Oh, it took a minute for that to sink in. The next thing that I got was from Elizabeth Mott. This is a brand I sometimes do see come up on Amazon. I think I've tried a sample or something here and there from this brand, but I hadn't heard about this primer or known anything about the popularity of this, but this eye primer called Thank Me Later is $13.06 and it has over 3,000 reviews and four and a half stars. So you're getting a little tube here. How much is in it? 0.35 ounces. Milani is just 0.3 ounces, but you are paying about half the price for the Milani. Let's see what the texture feels like. We've got a squeeze tube here and it has a gentle pink tint. It has a nice thinness. It's not going to be a sticky primer. I I can tell that. And it has kind of a smoothing effect, I feel like, as it smooths into the skin. It doesn't have like 100% dry down, which I don't want. You know, I want something that shadow can cling to. It seems actually really similar to the way uh, Milani might perform. So let's put this on, and this might have to be like a, a wear test day as well. So we're going to smooth this on the eyes. It smooths on pretty easy. It maybe looks a little more brightening just from that light pink color as opposed to um, the beigey tone I'm used to in my Milani, but I'm just getting that all over my eyelid through the crease and it'll go up to the brow. Now I guess I'm ready for my eyeshadow look. I'm gonna use a new little palette I got from Sephora. This is the Too Faced Shake Your Palm Palms palette. It's kind of reminding me of that mini peach palette I have, just a slightly different color scheme here. I think I might just sort of show the look and fast forward that I end up doing, just so it doesn't take up too much time. And you know, this wasn't an Amazon product, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do a very simple eye look with this. All 
right, so the eye look is done. As far as the primer's performance, I do feel like it kind of grabbed product in a similar way that the Milani does. I'm not one, you'll notice, who like does a big wash of a light neutral shadow all over first because I feel like that sometimes eliminates the primer's ability to be that kind of sticky tacky product that will grab a shadow and help it stand out more, you know? So I just tend to go to the crease first and built up some lighter shades, pulled in a darker shade, and then went kind of peachy and light on the lids. And this palette, in a very similar way to the other one, remember how I talked about that peach palette being kind of a multitasker? Well, I could see these shades being bronzer, blush, and highlight here too. Too Faced, are you guys watching my videos? Do you know what a good idea that was? I feel like those shades might have been a little bit of a happy accident in the peach palette, but maybe now you're trying to do that. The shades smell like peach palette powders to me. I don't know. I like the way they apply. They seem plenty pigmented enough. This light shade, the light shimmery shade, isn't super intense. It's just kind of a smooth, more subtle sheen, I guess. But now we're going to move on to this product. This is called the Wing Liner Stamp. This product I spent $13.97 on. It's actually a set of two liner pens in here, and it says, as seen on BuzzFeed. And you can get the 12 millimeter, 10, or 8 millimeter size. I got the 10 millimeter wing. It has 3,865 reviews, and it looks like four and a half stars. So I guess this has worked out well for a lot of people. And the reason why there's two is because there's a right wing and a left wing, and then within a pen, it's double-ended. So you're gonna have the side that's just kind of classic pointy liner pen that can take you all the way across Across your lash line and then I guess you just stamp on the wing liner stamp. This was a product I was really considering when I was thinking about doing this sort of like first impression style because if this is really gonna be super user-friendly I should be able to make it work without a ton of practice right? So here we go going in first time use. The pen seems nice and black but there's no real flexibility to it so you're really working off the tip just FYI. It kind of reminds me of some kind of jumbo eye marker, eyeliner that NYX had that I used quite some time ago. So I'm going to get out to the end of my lash line here and just stop <laughs> because now we bring in the wing side. This is going to be kind of hard to try to show you, but you have a wing shaped stamp here. It's going out like this. It's tapering off toward this side. Can you see that? And it just has a little lift so you can kind of see what side it's coming from. You can't really see, like as I'm looking here, I can see the end part, but I can't see the finished wing. But, okay. Oh my gosh, there it is. It's not 100% even like the, the area, the crease part of my eye where it indents, it's a little softer color. But you know what I can easily do? I can go back to this side and just sort of fill that part in. That's the wing I've got. Okay, I think that's reasonable for like a subtle wing. I mean, it worked. Question is, what will the staying power be like on this? Because even if this is a good idea and gives me consistent, like even wings on each side, if it's gonna smear or smudge off, we got a problem. So I'm moving on to the left eye. It kind of bugs me to think that I have to have two whole separate pens here, but whatevs. Like, it could be cool if they just sold an option just with the wing stamps and put left on one end, right on the other, and people who already have their liquid liner could just use what they've got. But that pen is definitely easy enough to apply there. Now I've got my stamp side. Okay, I've got to do this with my right hand here. Um, all right, how do I get this even with the other side? Just go for it. Ooh, okay. That one I applied more pressure and I feel like I got a wing that I don't need to fill in anymore. That's bizarre. I've never tried anything like that before. Okay, I'm gonna just fill a little bit across here. And then what I would do to like complete this look and really make it kind of, you know, the style of shadow and liner I like to use when I'm doing winged liner, I would take a dark shade and an angled brush, this is just my typical routine, and go down under the wing and kind of let that meet up with it. 
So I've got my neat little winged liner, but I've got more of a fade and more of a um, fitting in with my shadow look. So I'm just using that dark brown from the palette right here. It sure was easy. And the wings look even. I mean, placement was a little bit like, oh, I putting this in the very same spot, but I bet if you continued using it, um, you know, I'm not really putting it on the corner, physical corner of my eye because I want a little more lift up. So as you could see, I was placing it more like even with the very last edge of my liner, letting it overlap the outer part of the liner, and then I'm getting sort of the wing shape that I'm after. That was pretty cool, you guys. It's cruelty-free and vegan. Actually, it doesn't have anything really unusual as I read the ingredient list, like nothing I can't grenade announced there. It says waterproof, smudge proof, life proof. That's definitely going to be the second part of the test. <laughs> Next up I got a mascara that I have definitely never heard of before. It's called Cabaret Premier and it's by the brand Vivian Sabo Paris Artistic Volume Mascara. Let's pull up the price and ratings on this. I think it's kind of fun to see like how many reviews some of these things have had and yet it's still gone under my radar some of these brands. I mean you tell me, have you heard of a lot of this stuff? Stuff. 1225 it's got over a thousand reviews 1440 and four stars it just says apply to eyelashes from root to tip and wiggle to fully coat the lashes reapply if desired this is also cruelty free viviansaboparis.com is the website of this brand and this is all sealed up within the box ready to make my cabaret premiere let's take a look at this brush okay this could be good um, this brush does not look obnoxious in any way um, I tell you what, that new Too Faced Damn Girl mascara, that brush is obnoxious, I will say that. I'm still testing that stuff out, but wow. So this is a very petite sized brush. It kind of reminds me of Clump Crusher a little bit. I'm seeing rubber bristles. I'm seeing taper toward the tip. So first things first, I need to curl my lashes. I've really been into this Laura Mercier lash curler for some reason. I keep grabbing for it every time. I think it's a little quicker to get positioned on my lash line than the Tweezerman. I don't know what that's about. It's just maybe a little more open design, not quite as curved. All right, Vivian Sabo, show me what you got. Okay, immediately kind of impressed by this. It's defining, it seems really black, and it doesn't seem to be like gooping me up by any means right off the bat, but it is lengthening out. Like there are some mascaras that define really nicely, but you don't feel like they're necessarily adding anything to your lashes, like this is adding. Um, let's go in for another dip in the tube. I think this might benefit, it's feeling kind of wet. I'd say it's not a real dry feeling formula going on. And this might benefit from waiting a little bit on that eye, going over to my other eye here and starting and then come back. Um, if you feel like the mascara you're dealing with is wet, you could take, you know, a zillion strokes through it. But if you don't give it a little time to dry, it's not going to build on itself. So that's what I want to see if it will do that. And then after this, we have a set of lip products. Okay, I'm going to quickly apply my first coat to this eye and then we'll kind of be going back and forth. I really feel a ton of control with the brush size, like I'm not tapping my eyelid with it or getting messy. Okay, now back to the other eye. Yeah, that little bit of dry down between coats helps. Now I can see it building a lot more length. I'm gonna put a little bit here on my lower lashes. I do have a dentist appointment today. Um, That'll be a good test of staying power. I'll have to wear those glasses and, you know, stuff happens with your makeup when you're at the dentist. You might take a little splash of the water from time to time. This is about two coats per eye, I would say. Um, I feel like the length is pretty good. Um, the curl holding, I think, could be better. I'm gonna go in for one more pass on each eye. It really is, like, it's so hard. I wish I could have a camera, like, coming right up from where I'm, the view I'm getting in my mirror because the lashes are staying pretty defined but they're getting thicker. Okay, so there's the lashes. Again, I'm not sure how good of a look you're able to get at them from this angle, but I feel like I've gotten a lot of extra length, 
a lot of thickness per lash but maybe not the best curl hold right now. Once I feel like they're totally dried, I might give them a quick little boop, a little like crimp with the curler and just see what that does. But for now, I'm gonna take off the residue that I have on my lips from that kind of gloss lip oil situation, which really does feel like it's moisturized my lips nicely. The minty shade was not like super duper cooling by any means, but I could feel it a little bit. This is the next step. This is the Beauty Glazed Makeup Professional Matte Liquid Lipstick Set. With that little drip there, I wonder if they're kind of trying to be like Kylie a little. Um, let's check the price on this. This is a six piece set. They are minis. Let's see, it was $9.98 and it's got 383 reviews and three and a half stars. So it looks like we've got everything from light, kind of peachy nude to a few like kind of medium neutrals, a rosy shade and a deeper color. So I think, I'm just getting my wet wipe ready here. I should try them all on for you and then just end up sticking with one to wear throughout the day and see how that goes. Again, dentist. We'll see what happens. Okay, this is the lightest shade. It's called Exposed. They say kissing on them. There was nothing about that on the box. Okay. They smell almost like the slightest attempt at chocolate, maybe. Not strong, though. Okay, this is just to get a sense of the color. I don't know if I'm going to leave all these on long enough to give you an, a full dry down here, but that shade was pretty opaque. I mean, it's not really streaky, which sometimes you get with the lightest liquid lipsticks. Not my favorite shade on me. Already starting to dry down very much though in that short amount of time. Oh, these are gonna kill my lips to remove these. I've got this little Maybelline Super State Eraser Stick that sometimes helps getting long wear products off. I might use that. There we go. Oh my gosh, next shade they're literally calling Candy K. Isn't that the name of a Kylie liquid lipstick? This shade I like. Not familiar enough with Kylie's line to tell you if this is Candy K on point. Wait, one of these that I have in my mini set is Candy K. It does look a lot like that lighter of the two shades here. Really pretty shade. I do like that color a lot. I think that's a wearable nude for me. As it dries down, I can see a little deepening. Um, it's kind of a cool nude. The dry down is so fast with these. This Super Stay Eraser Stick is a lifesaver. Okay, this next one is called Coco K. So it's a little deeper and more pinky, rosy. So clearly we know what brand they're trying to knock off here. And as far as liquid lipstick goes, consistency wise, they feel thin. Like I'm not struggling to build up color. They seem fully opaque. A question going forward may just be how well do they wear? Do they wear evenly across the lips? Or is there gonna be that awkward kind of rim around the lips? But gosh, that's a pretty color. Very pretty rosy shade. Now that it's on the lips looking, I think slightly deeper than what's in the tube. But I would love if those of you who are really familiar with Kylie's line could tell me if that looks a lot like Coco K. But I can tell from the dry down, like al already this has dried. This is not transferring off onto my finger. Like boom, it's done. But look at this, there is still a little bit of this going on. Like the lips are grabbing between each other a bit. I'll have to really look at whether that keeps happening as I wear it over, you know, a period of hours. Okay, the next shade is called Dulce K. Um, this is this warm kind of sort of terracotta looking color. Is that yet another Kylie ripoff shade, I think? And there's some, definitely some brown in this, a little orange, but a very like burnt orange type color. Who this before, the University of Texas fans out there? Don't dislike that color at all, actually. I don't feel like I wear a lot of this color, but that looks pretty good on my lips. Again, evenness of color, lack of streaks. Um, maybe the darkest shade will also tell us a lot about whether this is gonna look streaky. The lightest one went on pretty even, but I can't really argue with the look. Again, though, it is a matte liquid lipstick. Some people just aren't gonna love that feel. I'm kind of one of them. Like, it's not my favorite thing to wear. But for from a practical sense, you tend to have good staying power with it. Okay, next one is called Kristen. I don't know if that's a Kylie shade or not, folks, but it looks like kind of a deep, corally, a little bit of berry infused in there. Again with the smell, I'm feeling it a little stronger on this one. Sweet and like trying to be just a bit of chocolate in there. 
Very glam, but not a pure red. Definitely kind of this pinky berry red. Again, the dry down happens so fast with these. I can tell it's already drying down. I tried to really be conscious of the amount I was getting on there, like trying to get the minimal amount of product to see if I could keep it from feeling tacky between the lips, and it does feel less tacky. Like they're not, the lips aren't trying to grab one another as they touch. Ooh, this one's tough to get removed, but I can tell the, the texture of the product is gone, but that shade is leaving behind a bit of a, like a stained look almost. Then we have Leo, and Leo is this dark brick red. This is the shade I think we really want to watch for seeing if it's going to be a streaky application. By the way, the doe foots here are, could not be more of a classic, just standard doe foot applicator. Nothing different going on. Okay, kind of a blood red color. It is a little tougher to get that looking even. I feel like out toward the outside. You gotta work kind of quick because again, these set fast. Here, oh, I just took another swipe from the other side of the applicator. This shade is gonna be touchier for even application than like the middle of the range where it was just very like slap it on and it looks perfect. You gotta watch it a little more, but it is a pretty shade. That's a glam fall winter color for a lot of people. Very vampy and rich there. Okay, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna pick one to wear all day, because it's not gonna be this one today. Here's what's up. I have reapplied the Coco K shade to wear all day. I thought it would be a, just a good middle ground here because it's deep enough to, I think, really show if there's any kind of awkward wear down, but at the same time, not like crazy dramatic. And then I gave one more little curl to my lashes. And I think now maybe you can see the amount of length that I truly am working with here. Like it's pretty good. We'll see if it flakes or smudges or does anything like that. I mean, from here on out, stay power is the real concern with the eyes and lips. We want to see if that eyeliner lasts. We want to see how the mascara does, which was applied to my lower lashes too, and the lip color. But overall, I don't feel super shocked by the best-selling status of these different products. You know, nothing was a glaring fail. These are kind of like, you know, they're okay. I wonder what brought them to the top of the list, you know? They are moisturizing yet glossy, and you've got the three different um, scents or oil infusions there. They're all right, but they don't really contain the same same kind of gimmick, sort of, that the wing liner stamp has. This Cabaret Premier Mascara, it did go on quite nicely. Um, the lashes feel not really too much different from any dried down mascara. Um, the Elizabeth Mott eyeshadow primer, that's another thing we want to assess, is whether the shadow stays looking consistent all day. And these, as far as liquid lips it goes, I mean, yeah, they're dry. My lips are, have zero moisture to them. But if you're trying to capture, I guess, some of those colors that are like the Kylie line, it's 10 bucks or just under 10 bucks for that. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will be checking back in soon. I got out of my dentist appointment and you can see maybe a mark across my forehead from where those glasses were the big like goggly glasses but um, the lip color is pretty fascinating that's still looking pretty even and the hygienist was like you know do you want to take off your lipstick before you get started because sometimes they'll say that you know like if you've got something on there I'm like well this is designed to stay on so we'll see how it works so we were both interested to see at the end how it ended up and that held on pretty well the eyeshadow still looks the same and I don't have any like tackiness or strange feeling on my lid eyeliner is still there. The big question at this point was, is will the lip color last through a dentist appointment? I think I do have some signs of, of wear. It's not quite as flawless as it started, but it's definitely still there. So I'm feeling good about that. Belle went with me to the appointment. Um, she says she wants to be a dentist when she grows up. So she's very interested. Plus she got a treat from the treat bucket. <laughs> I'm now checking in at noon and I've had lunch. I think we can see where the wear down is happening on my lips. It's not incredibly stark, um, but there is certainly some fading in the center of the lower lip. Meanwhile, the top lip kind of shows you what it originally looked like. Um, I am seeing smudging down beneath the eye from that mascara. It's hard not to want to wipe that away right now. But the length and curl holding, once I gave it like that one extra curl before I left, that's kind of staying. The eyeshadow doesn't appear to be creasing anywhere. That looks nice and even. So yeah, I would say the two big staying power things. I can see the lip color starting to fade. I had some pizza, some leftover pizza um, that I made last night. I had that for lunch. So dentist appointments and pizza, two pretty good tests of a lip product. And then like I said, a little smudging now down below the eye. So that's where we're at.
that, folks. All right, guys, this is the most unsatisfying end to a check-in ever, but I have to wrap this up. Here's the deal. Last night, I was checking my makeup while I was cooking dinner, and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to shoot this check-in. I'll just do it when I'm done cooking. And one thing led to another, and I was in the shower, and I hadn't yet shot the check-in, and I was like, oh no. But the important thing is I did take note at like 12, 13 hours in what the makeup was doing. And I can tell you that the eye looks still look good. So I think the primer is effective. The eyeliner was still in place. Granted, I didn't put it through literal like waterproof testing scenarios. You know, it just, it stayed throughout a day. It didn't smudge. The mascara, on the other hand, the smudges became worse under the eye. Things seem good on the upper part of the eyes. Um, I wouldn't say I like it quite as well as Super because Super Sizer will hold my curl better. But like, it was a decent mascara. It just, I didn't like the smudging under the eye, obviously. And then the liquid lipstick, again, the top lip looked pretty even still at the end of the day. And I definitely was like removing product from my lips. The bottom lip, I could just feel that like the liquid lipstick texture was pretty much removed from most of it. But here's the thing, I think that particular color actually may have done a little staining because even though the texture of liquid lipstick was gone, I still had some color and that made the whole wear down seem less stark all day long, I think. So just throwing that out there, guys, I wanted to recap for you. I wanted to finish things off. I'm sorry you didn't see the finished look, but I mean, you saw midday through and it really didn't change drastically from that, just more under the eye mascara smudging. So thank you guys so so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.